All right, hello and welcome to episode 20 of the Honest Truth Podcast. My name is Nick Veldman. I'm the owner of Venn Construction, and I'm sitting here today with Mr. Adam LaPlante. Hi there. So Adam, tell us a little about yourself. What do you do for Venn? I came to work for Venn last October. I am the Director of Construction Services, and I do a little bit of everything. No. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm kind of leading the Venn Compliance and Venn Management sections of Venn Construction, or Venn Companies, rather. So a little, uh, little bit of a long story here on how Adam came to be at Venn. Um, my memory serves 2014. We did our first job together. I think it was late fifteen, actually. 15. Yeah, late okay. fifteen into sixteen. That would make sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so you're working with a, a nationwide group. Can you tell us a little bit about your role, kind of leading up to this point? So I was a senior project manager for a medical company who built cardiac um, ambulatory surgical centers, mm-hmm. uh, and so I kind of supervised uh, the projects from lease to licensing, essentially, and everything in between. Um, how I met you was uh, we were building our first project in Arizona, and I didn't know any contacts in the area, didn't know any builders in the area, and I just Googled <laughs> contractors in Phoenix. Marketing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 and found uh, RGM Construction. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think I bid to two others. I don't even remember who they are now. Uh, you guys won the bid, and, and there we go. Yeah, and, and, and we were like – and, and funny, too, because we were like right in the – RGM to Venn transition yeah, phase, yeah, yeah. Um, which was cool. Yeah, so um, not an uncommon way to be located, by the way. Yeah, uh, and and that's you know that's kind of happened for us a few times. But talk to me a little bit about that that job and and how not that specific construction project, yeah. but the job that you had <clears throat> from a nationwide perspective. Um, you know, I'm going to have a surgery center, and then you build it. Good job. Then what? Yeah, so, you know, it, it started, you know, obviously we had business development and they would go out and kind of meet with doctors and, and then they would partner together or doctors that already had partnered together and mm-hmm. wanted to build a facility uh, but didn't have the means or the, you know, they wanted to have somebody manage their practice. And so <clears throat> that was typically, you know, at that point early on in the process, the, uh, the business development folks would have myself or my team come in, look at the sites, meet with the docs, go over their performance. Um, and kind of discuss through how it would work from, like I said, leasing into design, into construction, and then into early licensure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we did that uh, nationwide. Uh, well, NC, NCP was our original company, and that was uh, in, the, in the south pretty much primarily. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we later on partnered with a larger company who was kind of uh, really nationwide up yeah. in the northeast and things like that. So uh, our, our business kind of expanded that way. I think the scope gets a little bit confusing. You know, when we first stepped into the medical arena and, and we're working with folks like yourself, um, yeah. that's a luxury, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, on the on the GC side, when you get to work with a project manager, a seasoned team, they know the process, they understand the construction, they help manage the architect, um, and ultimately keep kind of everything under under their belt. What we've experienced over the last handful of years is a lot of folks developing surgery centers without that key individual or yeah. a key company. Yeah. And I think one of the the challenges is if you haven't gone through it before, obtaining licensure is, is you know. It's a bear. It's a bear. And, yeah. and, it, and it, it can be a yeah. bear, um, specifically federally, right? Mm-hmm. If you're going through AAA or, or any of that kind of stuff, uh, joint commission, there, there's there's just stuff that that is complicated and, and convoluted. So yeah. I'll fast forward here to the finish line and then we can, you know, kind of jump back through the story a little more. But um, I, feel, I feel like I pursued you for like six or seven years. I'm like, hey, I, I want you to come and work for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think the the thought process, my or my original thought process, which ultimately kind of ended up being incorrect, but my original thought process was I just wanted somebody on the team that really understood the licensure process. Now, yeah. The mistake in that is we're not traditionally contracted to get a facility license. We're contracted to construct it. But right. the reality is, is if the facility is not licensed, then it it doesn't work, right? Yeah. And so yeah. ultimately, we end up being part of that journey. And and in order to make our clients successful, help our clients be successful, that became a really critical piece for us. So 
you became my confidant, whether or not you were on the payroll. Uh, and, and we were asking, you know, asking a lot of questions of you yeah. and, and really kind of like, hey, what about this? What about that? How can we handle this issue? Um, what we've noticed over the last few years is after construction, um, what happens, right? Yeah. And, and these, um, these healthcare facilities now away from the hospital, right, um, on their own, entrepreneurs running their practice, uh, seeing patients, um, you know, healing folks and, but they still have to maintain this Ferrari of a building. Right. 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 And there's rules and regulations for how to do that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, after a, a series of conversations, you know, Venn compliance was born. Right. And, and you became the, you are the, you know, the reason for that existing within Venn. Um, tell me how, tell me why you think that makes sense. How, how were we able to, you know, get you over here, I guess. Uh, but like, help me understand kind of your thought process on the necessity of that portion of the business. Well, I think, you know, when you and I were working together, when I was with my previous company, you know, that, like you said, there's a, it's kind of a, a rarity uh, to have a, a group that, you know, we didn't get into means and methods of construction, but it was more of a, you know, kind of an over the shoulder review of how it was put together. And obviously design is, is very important. Site selection is very important than construction. And really is just knowing, knowing the ultimate goal is to have it licensed. Mm -hmm. And so seeing it built and, and, and going through and seeing those, those items go in and piece together, um, having that in, in goal in sight, it makes licensing that much easier. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to VIN compliance, and now obviously we built the facility and we've got it, they've got it open, they've got it operating, they've got a million things to do on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, and things like that. Whereas VIN compliance kind of takes some of that load, especially for the life safety and EOC, which is items mainly dealing with stuff that nurses typically don't like to do. EOC, hold on. Uh, you just dropped. You sorry, just, yeah, yep. dry, yeah, yeah. EOC is environment of care. Yep. And so those are the items that kind of are really associated with construction uh, for the most part. And so that's generator and that's, you know, med gas. And life safety. Life safety. Um, life safety, item, yeah, you know, emergency lights, exit lights, things like that that are all kind of inclusive in that. Mm -hmm. So why is this necessary? Who, who's doing this job in the average facility today? So in this, in, in normally you would have um, – a person that is assigned these duties to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times those are also operators. They're either nurses or they're rad techs or whomever. They have another job in, a, in addition to doing these other duties. Um, so it's, it's, and you know, you get your city requirements and you've got things like that just to get it open or a certificate of occupancy. The Joint Commission or CMS regs that run through Joint Commission AAA and all those other entities um, exceed that. A, by a lot and so there's there's just more things to do that have to be done at, at, a, at a cadence that is very defined and and kept up with as the facility is running take break this down a little bit yeah. right and 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 take through so some some folks that may not understand the ins and outs or maybe haven't had to do this before sure sure like run through some of the some of the things uh so i mean for like for instance like fire alarm and fire sprinkler typically that's like an annual thing that the city requires you to do so they'll have somebody come in you know company every year and make sure everything works and that's it that's all you got to do um for for cms regulated facilities you know it's got to be there's a cadence of, of monthly things there's there's quarterly things mm -hmm. there's even weekly items that have to be done just checking the fire poles make sure they're clear there's no obstructions things like that that mm -hmm. Those are small items, and they seem kind of insignificant, but they have to be documented in such a way and follow the code as e exactly as that they're Documented, it. compiled, stored, mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. binderized, but yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, and like they like hard copies. Everything's got to be, like, you know, just in a book that they can open up and flip to that area and see that they've done them. So Venn Compliance is doing which portions of this? So Venn Compliance is, is managing the – the vendors mm -hmm. to come the licensed vendors to do fire alarm and generator and things like that and then th there's also a service to have one of our guys come out and do those weekly services that you know are visual inspections and things like that just to document those items um, that not necessarily they don't have to you know switch any buttons or turn anything on but they're documented in such a way that they've been visually inspected per code so now the inspections are coming right yeah. and and there's a you know there's a, a cadence for that as well right so um, yearly or every three years federally. Um, what's that process like? And and how, you know, let's say what's that like under what I would consider a, a traditional circumstance? And then what's the potential for that process to be like with the um, 
addition of VEN compliance? Well, I mean, you know, you're you running a facility and, and things get busy and sometimes those items may slip. Um, and so uh, typically when you're first licensure, they're not looking so hard at the paperwork and all the documentation and that kind of stuff. They're really looking at more of the credentialing side and getting you open and, and making sure that, you know, it's kind of the final city stuff has been done over the, you know, the course of a three years. Like I said, you know, some of that stuff kind of may slip or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the biggest thing that they'll, they'll kind of they'll write you up on or, or document you on is, you know, you may have a, a month just that you missed, and that's, that's a write-up. Um, things like that that then can keep a, a constant documentation and having a guy that's coming out every week. And, and we have a software that will alert us when a, when a vendor's supposed to come. And, and make sure that we're reminding him, hey, you know, you're coming up in, in five days because you've got a window of, of 10 days every quarter to mm -hmm. get there and document that stuff. Scheduling, um, you know, documenting, binderizing, right? Making yeah, sure everything's yeah, in the binder, yeah. everything is, is stored on location and yep. also backup copies with us, right? Yep. Uh, and then handling all the administrative burden of all of those those vendors as, as well, yep. right? They Keeping their have, contracts. And, yeah, they yeah. each have individual contracts. They've got, you know, um, Pay applications mm -hmm. and and things that we're working through and managing yep. for the client on you know basically and then just invoicing on a monthly basis right right, right. and so it really makes that process simple. Mm -hmm. um, we started talking about this, gosh, three years ago. Yeah. Um, you know maybe even a little further, and I didn't want to do it. I I was I was sure that there was another service here locally that was going to take care of this. And ultimately the, the thought came from really trying to service our clients long term. We were getting phone calls, yeah. right? We're getting phone calls, um, you know, 14, 18 months after, after we build the facility and come to find out like, you know, Hey, my, my, my AC unit's not functioning like it should. I've noticed, you know, some loss in capacity. I'm having trouble holding temperature in the ORs. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go check it out. Let's see what, you know, see what's going on. Um, do you have your service records? Um, who's been maintaining the equipment, you yeah, know, and yeah. a lot of empty stairs yeah. and, and, and really trying to, how do we, how do we help that? How do we make that not the case? Right. Um, and, and how do we, how do we show up to a facility and really provide value um, as opposed to bad news? I'm not a bad news guy. I really dislike bad news. And yeah. so, you know, how can we be more uh, proactive with this? So, um, Spent some time, used contacts. Uh, there's got to be a property management company in town that does this, right? right. Well, yeah, but not not with the um, the focus on compliance, right? And that's why it's Venn compliance mm -hmm. and not Venn property management because that's, yeah. that's not what we're trying to do. We can assist with some of those things, but that's not at all what we're trying to do. We are focused on compliance. We are focused on helping your surgery center maintain its credentialing so that you guys can keep going. Yeah. Right? And that's yep. really the focus. Why yep. why is that different? Help me understand why that's different or how that's different. Well, I would think a property manager, you know, is is going to be focused on kind of the city mandated requirements or state mandated requirements that for for just a building, right? Um, like I said before, you know, the compliance aspect of it is is the fact that you know, the codes require you to do so much and keep that stuff, you know, in in such a regulated binder that has everything in it. Um, you know, to the to the T. It's got everything. It's got to be lined up exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times, I think the like I said, the difference between property managers is is you know they're doing kind of the minimum to for for whatever the local authority says they have to do. Um, and 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 we take it a step further, obviously, yeah. with with uh, knowing and, and knowing the codes and and keeping up with the updated codes and and those kind of things. That um, a lot of that stuff is is uh, very specialized. Now we've expanded the service to to. Two, two, uh, in order to be able to go into facilities and, and do mock inspections and mock reviews yep. as well, right? So yep. tell me how that process works. So, you know, when you when you go into a facility, especially if one's been operating for a while and, and they haven't either had a, a compliance company or had an EOC officer that was dedicated or maybe had some turnover, uh, the mock inspection process really kind of sets a, you know, I guess a, a initial baseline of where they are mm. uh, and kind of tells them exactly what they need, um, whether it's documentation, whether it's something physical plant wise, something that's got to be fixed. Um, and that would be, and it's, and we'll go, I'd go through a, essentially the, um, the local, uh, local code, which in this case, like in state of Arizona would be the facility guidelines Institute. And we would go through those items, item by item in, you know, in looking at other code books as well that are, you know, there's a bunch of them. Um, and, um, 
and, and finding those items, whether they're deficient, whether they're whether they're good, and, mm-hmm. and then and then kind of giving them a full report that would say, here's what you have, here's our um, suggested fix for these things, and then eventually would do you know get people out to to do those fixes and get an estimate for them and things like that. Yeah, yeah, kind of full service there, right? Right. So, um, can the show go on the road, right? Show can go on the road. Yeah, the, the I think some of the the limitations is having our our man and van as we're calling him yep. to come out and do some of the weekly more more I guess having somebody on site every week. Mm-hmm. Obviously, being remote like that, we wouldn't have a guy to do that. Uh, but managing the vendors, absolutely keeping a book or binder for them, or or, or you know sending them a binder, or showing them on site, and, and kind of walking through a binder, and then saying showing them where the, where these documents go mm-hmm. once those reports are done. So that nationwide approach kind of mimics a little bit your your job from before so yep. so talk to me a little bit about that process what's it like to keep you know everybody's got a home base right, right. so so what's it like to keep a, a surgery center compliant um, you know our home base obviously Arizona but what's it like to keep a, a surgery center compliant in a different state different jurisdiction well I mean it's it's you know we had the luxury of building a lot of those facilities so we already kind of knew what that local um, code was Mm -hmm. you know for instance the fgi the facility guidelines institute um, arizona uses a 2018 some states still use the 2010 these are just additions that they come out with so uh, knowing what those were helped with the review and you know what was needed at that specific facility for the most part we always kind of graded them um, at the most strictest code Mm because that mean we could pretty much pass everything Um, and really most of that stuff dealt with you know the initial design and things like that uh, but as far as keeping them compliant across the board from you know my area was from Mississippi West um, was just you know making uh, having personal relationships with with the folks that, that work there and and knowing all the um, you know the center managers and things like that they knew me by name and kind of having them on a you know first name basis and, and helping them out whenever they needed it I think the goal is really to allow people to focus on what they do best, right? Yeah. And and not put the environment of care responsibilities on uh, folks within the center that really should be serving patients, right? And and allowing them to use kind of their full capacity in order to to serve the patients that they see every day, and allow um, a singular resource for folks to to maintain compliance and, and yeah. just come in and and. Uh, you know, kind of let us handle it, so to speak, right? Sure, sure. Yeah, all right. Give me some fun facts about Adam. Where'd you grow fun up? Facts. Where'd, you, where'd you go to school? Let, let's like, let's walk the walk the path here to professional career. Okay, okay. Well, I grew up in West Texas in a little town called Midland. Um, I know I don't sound like it. Sometimes I do. Sometimes you do. Sometimes I do. Yeah. Uh, and then I went to school at Texas Tech, got my degree in construction engineering, which you're very familiar with. Uh, and then I, right out of college, I went to work for the Corps of Engineers uh, and was in the con- contract administration department working on um, big BRAC projects, the base realignment consolidation. Nerd. Uh, nerd, yeah. Uh, so big hospitals, military bases, <coughs> dorms, things like that. Did that for quite a while. Um, got to know the paperwork side of construction very well, schedules, change orders, contracts, things of that nature. Um, and then kind of wanted to do something else Mm -hmm. and then went to work for um a big medical company uh that that again was a cardiac Mm -hmm. cardiac surgery center specialist um and and soon after i got the job um the asc's ambulatory surgery centers were a big push Uh, they were strictly building what's called an office-based lab um building out a network and insurance and things like that and then i think that kind of changed with the insurance sending what we call the death letters and so um, you couldn't bill for those procedures anymore mm-hmm. in that facility. So you had to be an ambulatory surgery center. So we upgraded, I want to say, 20 to 25 centers in my time, uh, acquired a few more and did stuff like that. And so, yeah. It's interesting how the, the industry has been so changed from the, from the change in insurance, right? But yeah. follow the money. Right. And, and, and really the innovation to change a lot of these centers from the OBLs um, into the to the ambulatory surgery centers has really kind of been a big shift. Oh yeah, um, in our industry as well. All right, so why Venn? Like why why uh, why is it not Adams Compliance Company, the ACC? Uh, why Venn? Why the why why does the partnership with a uh, with a midsize general contractor and fee? Why does that make sense? No, I just liked you. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Uh, yeah, no, I. Um, 
I think it was an opportunity to, to work with you and your team here and, and uh, trailblaze a little bit, do something exciting and on my own. To, to, uh, and to do it on my own was quite scary. And so to kind of partner with, with you and, and your team here uh, made a bit more sense, just not knowing the ins and outs of running a business, so to speak. Yeah. There, uh, there's a coaching aspect to it from um, – you know, from Venn construction side, yeah. uh, I yeah. want to be very clear that Venn compliance and Venn construction are different. Um, but the the coaching aspect that we get to capitalize on uh, within Venn construction is is really beneficial for our team. Um, we always talk about our superintendent staff and how you know we we run each superintendent through the you know healthcare is not the only thing that we build but we run each superintendent through healthcare projects at some point early on in their career with Venn and and the main point is to understand the tact and the care and the um, the complexity of a yeah. healthcare project yeah. if you can put together a a surgery center then you know the office TI construction becomes just that much easier right and right. so in a similar fashion um, you know we're kind of putting the the PM staff through uh, compliance boot camp here over the next uh, you know over the next few months and really kind of focusing on you know what what does it take for a center to be licensed what is important here just beyond the drawings beyond the you know beyond the contract what's truly important to our clients and how how do they monetize their endeavor here and ultimately the number one thing is being compliant yeah you, you, you can't monetize anything if you're not compliant right right so what's that I mean, what's that role kind of been like for you, director of construction services, right? Kind of by by design, but how, yeah. how have you kind of accustomed yourself to the the training aspect, and how does that kind of mimic what you were doing before? Well, I've, I've got a I've, I've got a small team here so far that uh, coaching a little bit and trying to to give them all the knowledge that I have uh, just from working over the years and, and and really doing it is is really what what makes a big difference. Um, and and obviously looking to continue coaching some of the folks here to. As, as I said before, when you're building these projects, knowing the code, knowing the things to implement as you're building and going, hey, you know, that, that, you know there's, a, there's a med gas zone valve box located behind a door. Like, we should, we should move that because mm -hmm. we know that's going to get called out in a licensure inspection. So I think that will be hopefully beneficial, and I think it will be beneficial yeah. to the staff here um, as, we're, as we're building more and more medical facilities. Awesome. Uh, more fun facts. Kids, sports. Oh, what, what, what does Adam do for fun on a on a Saturday afternoon? Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, so I've got uh, I've got two girls, seven and two, so I've got my hands full. Um, we, uh, my wife and I, live in, on a little three acre plot, and and we spend a lot of time outside. She's got a pool in, so I grill a lot, and things like that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's 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 kind of my, my weekends for the most part is just playing with them, hanging out with the kids. Give me the um, give me the elevator speech in a just a complete nutshell. Give me give me the thirty second, then compliance. You get thirty seconds with it. Oh with the team. man, why why are you here and what are you doing? I forgot my in, script. In case Adam stops I, by your I, surgery I, center sometime this month. I forgot my script. Uh, uh, the sales pitch is. Sales pitches, uh, you know, we're event compliance can can help you take care of your patients a little better. Mm -hmm. You're not focused on on these on these other items that maybe uh, you're not comfortable doing. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of that stuff is, you know, these nurses didn't go to school to work on a generator, so a lot of times it's just it, those are the kinds of things that we uh, we can take care of for them. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. We are so excited to be able to roll this out, not only for our clients, but also for the uh, for the benefit of, of Venn Construction and, and all of our endeavors. So find more out about us, vencompanies.com. Appreciate it.